2019 Ram 1500. Yeah, let me show you what we got going on here. Yeah. She's a little loose. I can almost pop her off. So, I'm gonna change that sucker. Stay tuned. Well, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. This is a great time to do it. See that thing? I'll be doing all kinds of stuff like that in the future. Hopefully, that's the plan. So, please subscribe, like my video, and thanks for watching. All right, doing my little look over here. Got to pull the brakes off, so I got to pull the caliper, caliper bracket, rotor. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pop the upper ball joint. And I believe we're going to have to go with the bo a bottom ball joint also and the uh, steering arm here. Going to pop that guy loose and uh, get his whole steering knuckle out of the way. And then pull the spindle nut. And that should be it. So let's see if it goes that easy. Got the spindle nut off. That was a 35 millimeter. I'm going for the uh, uh, caliper bracket. The caliper bolts right now that was a 13 millimeter and that guy likes to spin so I just stick a screwdriver in there kind of just to show you kind of just wedge it in there like that pull down it real good and then uh, I got an impact on the back and zip that bolt out unless you got a real thin wrench that'll fit in there I think it's like 18 millimeter I don't have nothing that thin so screwdriver it is Going for the bottom one now. Got the caliper out. Brake pads out of the caliper bracket. Got the caliper hanging there. Went ahead and took loose the uh, anti-lock uh, cable off of the uh, little fasteners there. That one there, took that one off too. And then uh, took that one out too, off of there. Gives a little bit more room when I start breaking these, these uh, upper and lower control arms loose. And we'll have that all bound up. So now, going back for these guys right here. Take those guys loose and get that caliper bracket off. The rotor off. And then we'll start digging in deeper. Sixteenths. I don't have the metric, so probably around 21 millimeter. Yeah, I need the old demo. All right, I had a luber up real good and kind of pit on here all the way around get some shock in there and then put a pry bar in between here and here spun it pried spun it pried just little by little and finally it popped loose it was on there pretty good this thing's pretty rusty for a 19 upper ball joint again pride metric 13 16 
I rod in. Thirteen sixteenths. Twenty two milligrams. All right. Oh. All right, I got her. Should have kept recording. Two more wax and it popped. All right. Under the bottom. Alright, we're all set here. I put the bottom nut back on the ball joint. I don't want this falling off. I did take the anti lock cable out of the hub. Just a little Allen head bolt. Now, I'm going to try to get this axe was real loose up here. So, I got it off out of there. Here we go. Got her. Yeah, that end is shot. That's shot. I don't know about that shaft, I'll check that out. If that wasn't so loose, I probably got it out without taking off that bottom ball joint. But I probably can't get the new one in. We'll see. Now well, there that is. Oh boy. I don't know. They don't look very good. Alright, well that shaft is fucked. It's fucked, so... I gotta pull this whole housing off, this whole deal right here off. Don't look too bad though. A little bolt hole pattern here. So I got one there, one there, probably one on top. Uh, unplug the plug. And looks like a couple bolts up there. And that's it. I'll pull that sucker off. And that's the only way to change that. So it's not up next. Alright, that little red tab right there. You got to slide it back, which I already did from left to right. You can see a gap there. And then that exposes a little deal. Get my hand in there. Right there, you push down now. Pull it out. So there you go. So that's that. And I'm going for the bolts. There, I got that one out. And the top one back there somewhere. There it is, got that one out, 12 millimeter. Saving that one for now. And I'm up here doing these two right now. Those are 18 millimeter, just got a ratchet wrench. And I'm popping them out. And I took loose the cable out of there. That one I unplugged a little bit ago. So once I get those two loose, I'll crack that one loose and it'll pull out. All right, I got those two out, and I did find another one back. That it? Yeah, I think that's it back there. You can see it. So there's four. One, two, three, four. So yeah, you can see the two up there. I messed that one up there. But four of those are out. Those two are out. Now I just got to break the seal so I got some silicone in there I'm gonna have to actually right there I'm gonna have to finagle that thing and get her out of there Take these four out, pull that off, 
should just be a little shifting fork in there and uh i think that gear pulls off from that point so i'm gonna get it to there all right bolts are out there's a little fork there's the gear the little yoke that shifts over we'll pull that off Yeah, kind of hard one-handed. All right, got that out of there. Got to put it back in its home, just the way it came off. Over there. All right, now I believe. Um, I think that'll just pound out now. I'm gonna try to pound it out that way. Nah, uh, don't pound out. I knew better than that. There you go. Retaining ring right there. Big heavy one. Gotta get that out. Alright, I didn't show you all that, but I pull that retaining ring out. Get, some, get yourself some good pliers. Retaining ring pliers, the right ones. Got that out of there. And that allowed this gear to be pounded up and out this way. So, that's what I did. Took the, uh, took it out and just tapped on it, it came right out of there. Okay, once you pound it out of there, you're left with the bearing on a shaft and another retaining ring. So pull this retaining ring off, and then you can just knock the bearing off. I just put it in a vise like that, got a small punch, and uh, you can just go right through the root of your gear teeth here and catch that inner race, and it came right off. Not much of a press on it, a little enough press on it, but not real heavy. So that guy comes off, and that shaft's out. So here's the Dorman kit I bought. Bought it locally through a Dorman dealer. And that's the part number you're going to need for a 19 Ram Classic Express 5.3 Hemi. It's going to be this kit right here. I'm not going to use a lot of this. I, I'm going I'm I'm to use the bearing, of course. I'm going to use a new dust seal. I'm going to use a new clip. I haven't figured out where the hell this O-ring goes yet. The only place it can fit is right there. So the first undercut is where they cut the splines for the machining. They have a little relief groove machined in there. And that's not it. But there is this little groove here machined. It's not really an O-ring groove. But it does fit in there. Might be just a little dust seal to keep crap from getting in here again. That's the only diameter on this that it fits so that's probably where it goes i'm gonna have to do some research on that not a very good seal if you ask me um it came with a needle bearing here and that's for the housing up inside of this end here right there you see it down in there and then the seal all uh, right there too this thing did not leak and the seals in a good shape I'd, Checked it all out. The seal fit where it rides. Yeah, it's got a, I mean, can't even feel it. It's just shined up. It's polished. So, I, you know, it's risky. You could pull that thing out and I could this one in without smashing it and all that. I don't have a press here. I don't have a lathe here yet to make me a perfect tool to insert that guy without damaging it. So I am going to be better luck leaving this alone the bearing's good. The bearing journal is good. There's no reason to change that one. In this, in this situation I got here, if your journal's tore up and your seal's leaking, well, you got to change it. I don't have to, so I'm not going to. I do have to install that needle bearing. No big deal. So I'm just going to heat this guy up. I'm actually going to measure everything. I'm going to mic everything, see what kind of interference fits I'm dealing with. If it's real light, I'll tap it in with a punch. If it's heavy enough, I'll freeze the bearings, heat the shaft, and then when I go to put this bearing on here, be the opposite. I'm gonna heat the bearing and freeze the shaft. But I don't think that presses that much. I should go use a punch and lightly punch it on there. So that's, that's the plan. Get this sucker together. Oh, if you want to part numbers, this bearing that fits in the housing here, 
it is a coil bearing you get whatever brand you want but there's a there's a number there needle bearing here's your ena these are real popular needle bearings and that's the one that's going to go inside this bore and then the main bearing that goes on the shaft is a 6909 whatever manufacturer you want to go with but there's what they gave me in the kit the seal's probably a custom seal i'm sure i won't even try to go aftermarket there not even a name on it all right i went ahead and froze the bearing and i threw the shaft in the toaster oven at 350 for about 15 minutes I got a little bit of, I probably less than the press. I mean, the bearing was about two thousandths eggy, so I take the average. Bore was perfect, so it had about a one one and a half press. So uh, yeah, I just went ahead and uh, heated that. Grab me a socket that fits about the right size, and knocked her in. Next, now I'm going to go ahead and freeze the shaft, heat that bearing, and then I'll get that sucker on next. All right, like I said earlier, this seal staying in. Everything is good. While I'm waiting for the uh, shaft to freeze in the freezer, I went ahead and start cleaning everything. So clean up all that silicone that they had on there from the factory. They just used RTV black. So that's what I'm gonna use. And I'll show you the truck. All right, there's the truck side. I got it all, all the silicone out of there. So they pretty much just kind of gobbed it on right there. And there was a little bit on the inside, and that's about all you really need. You don't need to do all this. So that's all cleaned up, wiped down, and ready to seal. Time to start heating the bearing up. I already miked the bore, 1.772, uh, right? And it's still set. 775, yep, 1.772. So I'll see what that bore grows after it's in here for about 10, 15 minutes at 350-ish. Looking for about a thou clearance, maybe two clearance and it'll drop right on. Well, there it is at about three, four thousandths clearance. Dropped right on there. So let her soak up, stabilize the heat and uh, put the retaining ring on. And get her together. All right, got the retaining ring on. Got a little gear lube. I'm just going to put a little gear lube inside there and lubricate the bearings a little. Seal fits. And I'm going to go ahead and put this thing together. So it goes in that way. Gear facing me. So let me get going on that. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put it together and I'll put a little lubrication in there. Don't get a big old mess. Okay, show you what's going on there. All right, so that's where I got it. Now it's just a matter of knocking her down in that race. There we go, a little bit. Now I'm just going to go ahead and get a find some aluminum put on there and knock it down into place and then get that retaining ring on. All right, got my punch. And by doing it this way, it's not that tight. You're putting the pressure on the inner race and that's what you want. And it's going right down. Very easy. Here it is. retaining ring right here Amazon less than 24 hours got it oops got switched in the other way but yeah there you go Amazon snap ring plier set retaining ring plier set and this is a pretty heavy heavy uh, retaining ring so let's get her in there not flick across the shop. Right 
want to put your finger in there. Not quite down, almost. There we go. Got a clock where I want it, right towards me. That's it. It's in there. I'm just going to go and lube her up, and, uh, get some silicone, and she's ready to assemble. All right, ready to put this deal back together. Can't forget to shift her. So that's the way it came apart. So I know that goes like that. And I know this goes like this. And I know these go in there. Gotta jam them in there real good. You know, cross thread's better than no thread. You know. All right, I'll button that up. All right, I torqued these down. I just guessed about 20 foot pounds. Feel pretty, felt pretty good. Got my silicone in that corner real good. You gotta watch that a little bit. I don't wanna go too high with it. It's all gonna smear backwards anyways. Don't wanna plug up that little, that little deal there either. So make sure you got nothing right there. And uh, ready to slap her on. Here we go. Everything's clean up there. But be careful not to upset the silicone too much. Those all torqued down. All right, got them all torqued down. I just went 50 foot pounds. Felt pretty good. 50 is good. Got this little bracket here to put back on. Kind of forgot how it goes, but I'll figure it out. Kind of goes like that. Kind of goes. Yeah, like that. I can always check my video to make sure, but that's how it goes. I probably shouldn't have tightened that yet, because these might not line up. Uh, let to see. No, they're good. So I'll get those in and get those tightened now. All right, I went ahead and put the uh, dust seal in. It's got a little run out. Hear it rubbing? It'll wear itself in. So just tap that sucker on there, don't go on that hard. I just kind of tapped it on and there it is. And then I got the O-ring, put that right in that groove. And I got the little C-clip, got some general purpose grease on the spline. And I'm ready to put the CV shaft in. All right, I went ahead and put the CV shaft into the spindle first. So I'm not as hooked up here yet. But you can see it's got clearance so i'm just going to slap it on there and push it on i already measured this surface should be right around just past the o-ring up bottom of that chamfer right there then i know it's clipped in so i took my measurements already and i know where it should be
That's it. Yep, she's clipped on. So there you have it. You can keep your lower ball joint on. All right, time to button up everything else. All right, lower the truck back down a little. We're gonna go ahead and hook the uh, upper ball joint back up, tie rod back up, torque those down to proper specs, proper, and then uh, brakes. So let's get at it. on there. Then over here. Hold it. Looking like about 55 foot pounds on the upper ball joint and the uh, tie rod end. We'll see. I might go more. good 80 foot pounds on that one and the lower one i don't got a freaking socket i already tightened the shit out of it with a wrench i think it's 120 on that bottom one it's a bigger one all right i'm not sure why they would say 55 on this one it's the same size I'm gonna go 80 on that also. Same size. There's 58. Oh, well, maybe so. That's actually pretty tight right there, 58. I ain't going no more. 55 on that one. All right, time for the spindle nut. I'm reading 185 foot pounds on that one. So don't use an impact. I'm gonna use an impact to get it close. 
but don't use an impact to tighten her down. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this on the ground. I kind of figured I could put a cheater pipe in there and all that, but I got it drawn up enough. Yeah, right now it's drawn up. So I'm gonna finish that off when I have it on the ground. It's the only way I can do that. All right, so now I'm ready to put the old ABS cable back in. Make sure I have any crap on there. Get pretty clean. Don't tighten the shit out of it. All right, there's that. Gonna go ahead and clip all the wire looms back on where they belong. Okay, time for the brakes, I think. Rotor. little clips caliper bracket Tighten that up. All right, I got the back pad on. Get the front pad in here. There they are, not bound up. Not messing with a whole lot there. We're gonna probably be putting brakes on here soon anyway, so. This guy back on. Before I took that off, I pried it over a little bit. Brake pad just to kind of push the piston in just a little bit.
Okay, throw those in there. We'll tighten them up. All right, there it is. First side done. Gonna put the wheel on, torque that spindle, torque the wheel lugs, and this side's done deal. And then I'll get to the other side. That's gonna probably not be on this video though. So I'm just gonna show you the second side real quick here. You can see the spindle still on, lower ball joint is still on, and that CV axle is out. So it can be done. A lot of guys try pulling the CV shaft out from this side first. They try pushing the spline through the hub here. They, and they try pulling out right. Yeah, right there, they try pulling out and it won't, it won't go that way. You have to do it from this, off here. this side here. Just pull it off. I did it here, I just pried it off and it comes back enough and you can compress the actual CV joint more from this direction from whatever this side seems to want to bind up and it's a pain in the ass so just pull it out on this side so it can be done leave that lower ball joint on and then do it like i showed on the other side just a little tip well there you have it i'm gonna end the video there other side is a different deal I'm not gonna show that this was the side that really mattered so thanks for watching subscribe if you haven't if you have thanks a lot and uh see you next time